ashamed for having her as a mother. I wanted a mother like all fr my friends' mothers. My father, Stanley, asked the help of my step-grandmother, Roberta Dunca, and her new husband, Manuel Anabia, who both readily agreed to take us into their home. <coughs> when Dad brought us to Grandma Roberta's house after the traumatic episode of the police breaking down our front door to rescue us and taking my mother away, Rosita and I were both suffering from malnutrition and sick with fever. My sister had chicken pox, and I had impetigo, a painful skin disease, uh, on my head and face. We were both black and blue from the beatings my mother, who had locked us up uh, away in a closet for days with only tea, some crackers, and occasionally a can of sardines to subsist on. We could not eat, and we were terrified of grandma and uncle, whom we did not know very well. Grandma Roberta and Uncle Manuel nursed us back to health, bathing, medicating, and bandaging my head and face daily. Grandma fed us the delicious Filipino comfort food, arroz caldo, and uncle would, uncle would look on cracking jokes and creating funny whistling noises to make us laugh and eat more. They were compassionate and protective of us. I remember Mama bringing our meal of tea and soda crackers to us in the closet. Then suddenly she lashed out at us, sending the food and drink flying across the room in every direction. Sun landing on the bed, which was already piled with dirty clothes and other debris. She grabbed my upper thigh and gave me an excruciating, painful pinch, pinch, yelling, why aren't you a good girl? You bad, you have no father, tell me you'll be good. I answered with all my strength, yes, mama, I'll be good, please stop. I began to cry. She let go of my thigh, picked up her belt, and started hitting me. Rosita was cowering, her head lowered, her hands covering her eyes. She did not want to see what she was hearing. Mama looked her way, grabbed her, and also struck her with the belt, saying, you no good, you bad. I yelled, no, no, she's my sister, please don't hurt her. The red welts from the buckle belt buckle had begun to sting and swell on my arms, buttocks, and legs. Mama continued locking Rosita and me up in the bedroom and closet off and on for about four months. We did not go to school during that time. During one rampage, she slashed and ripped our new dresses my father bought for us and saw her pounding the knife against the new shoes as she cut them into pieces. We ran back into our bedroom and hid in the closet. She was throwing things, slamming doors, and swearing in Tagalog and English. Had we not run out of the room, we could have been targets in the way of the knife and possibly killed. I remember feeling terrified of her and very ashamed. I also felt guilty because I thought I was to blame by being a bad girl. I also felt a deep love for her. She was my mama. I wanted to be good. I wanted to be like she used to be. I wanted her to be like she used to be. A healing time for me was when Grandma could bundle us up to hear Mass. We'll pray for your mama to get well and for your daddy to be safe and to come home soon, she told me at church. I cried as we lit the candles for them. I knew that they would not be home for Christmas. However, lighting the candles and watching them flicker with light was soothing and praying in the quiet church with Grandma uh, at my side was comforting. My mother, who was half Filipina and half black, born and raised in the Philippines, experienced extreme racial prejudice by the white community in Oakland, California, when she arrived here in 1921 with her first husband, an African-American soldier who had been stationed in the Philippines in 1917. They had two sons. She was not totally accepted by the few Filipinos or by the African-American community. She had a rough time acclimating and adjusting to her new country. She spoke English with a heavy Philippine accent, which turned off many people who did not understand her. Acceptance into the social life was extremely difficult. She endured a life of hardship and amid racism here and in the Philippines. At age 10, my mother Felicia and her sister 
were taken care of by their relatives in the Philippines. Their uncle and other relatives treated them like servants because they were half black and half Filipino and did not look like their cousins with straight hair and fairer skin. Older male cousins repeatedly raped and beat the two girls who endured physical, emotional, and sexual abuse for five years until their father rescued them from this horrifying experience. I healed from my abusive experience because I was rescued by my grandmother, Roberta, who was married to my Buffalo Soldier grandfather and Uncle Manuel. I was raised in an atmosphere of love and nurturing care by them and the few Filipino immigrant families living nearby and who were a regular part of our family activities, celebrations, and holidays. We children were treated like rare gems. My new parents never spanked us. We were treated with respect and love. However, it took many years for me to overcome the guilt about my mother. When I was back at grammar school, I was ashamed to talk about her. Counseling and social services were not available to us. Discrimination was one of the many reasons at that time. It certainly was not available for my mother. People around her, including my father, did not understand her mental illness or why she was breaking down. Dad thought she was just angry. Although grandma and uncle were supportive of me, they could not completely erase the humiliation, guilt and hurt, and the abandonment I felt for many years. I still cry at age 77 for the pain this still causes me as I write this today. Yes, talking and writing about it helps. When my children were born, I was apprehensive about repeating the pattern of child abuse. Will I hurt my children in any way? Their father was very supportive of me and felt I would be very, a very loving mother. He said grandma was a great example in stopping the pattern of abuse by giving us a healthy, stable, and loving home life. She was a model for me as a mother. I did spank my children when they were little, um, on the butt when they were misbehaving, or tried to run out in the street. And I do regret that because today I firmly believe spanking is not needed to teach children. Their father never ever spanked them. There are other ways to help children to learn and behave without the use of violence. My daughters never spanked their children when they were growing up, and they are great people, well, happy, loving, adjusted human beings. I'm glad the spanking I gave my children did not inflict damage to them psychologically or physically. I took the responsibility of caring for my mother when she was released from Napa State Hospital in 1961. She lived in my home for a year and in small hotels and low-income apartments in Oakland. For almost 15 years, my daughter Stacy, an Oakland police officer at the time, helped her access social services and medical care. She regularly checked on her grandmother and a cop and accompanied me on visits because my mother's place was usually located in an unsafe neighborhood. In 1991, I found a small nursing home in Oakland managed by a Filipino family that my mother liked because the staff were kind and caring, spoke her language, and served Filipino food. She stayed in this facility until her death in March 1994 at age 94. My mother was diagnosed as mentally ill. Consequently, her abusive behavior towards my sister and me. It is important to point out that mentally stable people are also capable of being abusive, sometimes in more subtle ways. Some parents may not realize the harm that they are inflicting when they <coughs> belittle children from being overweight, underweight, etc corrected and humiliated in public, belted and slapped for misbehavior, or withholding affection for poor grades. Abuse is a learned behavior. Awareness is the first step 
to change the behavior. It is imperative to understand the effects of parenting. Today, I feel proud of my accomplishments, my wonderful family, my sister's accomplishments, and her great family, especially because I believe we struggled to achieve our life's goals by overcoming the physical and psychological trauma of the physical, physical abuse by our mother as young children and breaking the pattern of abuse to healthy parenting. I never used or blamed my mother's abuse of me to excuse any of my faults, failures, or problems. However, one of my greatest fears as a young adult was would I become mentally ill as my mother. At age 77 today, I certainly no longer have that fear, nor do I dwell on it. This is a very happy time of my life. I have a fabulous, supportive, loving husband and a wonderful family. I hold all of them dearly in my heart. I'm thankful I had a 50-year working career that I enjoyed immensely, and balancing that with raising a family and to be able to give back to my community through my volunteer activities, such as today's event on healthy parenting. I am fortunate to enjoy a great life of retirement with my husband, Bill. Thank you very much.